Hello, greetings. Sorry, I have to do this again. Continuing uh, now, but a, a different title. Umayyad versus Bani Hashim. Or Prophet Muhammad versus Abu Lahab, Abu Sufyan, Abu Jahal, etc. Or why? They killed. So, since the topic of uh, let's say, or uh, Yazid versus Hussein or Ibn Ziyad versus Muslim Ibn Akil, huh? So, as this thing came out in my last video about children going to war and what is the age in Islam and what does the Imam say. But he allowed them reluctantly to participate in war, Bibi Zainab. But then I was thinking of, uh, like, uh, why were they killing these children? And before even this battle, Muslim Ibn Akil's two children, who were also called Ana Muhammad, On and Muhammad, were killed, captured by these uh, Umayyad at that time, and killed. Why were these Umayyads going after, like mad, against the Ahl al Bayt, against Imam Hassan's children, against Prophet Muhammad's? I know why you would say, I know that what uh, Prophet Muhammad has said, and what uh, thereafter the Imams have said, and the ladies, women folk, holy women folks, of Prophet Muhammad have said, the daughters of Prophet Muhammad have said, the granddaughters of Prophet Muhammad have said, the grandchildren, grand great children, great grandchildren of Prophet Muhammad have said, but they couldn't say anything because they were killed madly. Someone, two people after Muslim Ibn Akil's kids, they jailed. Oh God. After they killed the father, they went after Muslim Ibn Akil's children. They jailed both of them. So, a uh, bit difficult for me emotionally to speak about this. I still have my Shia conditioning. I hope I get the heart because, yeah, no. Today, you're judging the West. You're saying Iran is great. It's okay. This is, we have a clean country. Iran is great, Shia Iran. The Islamic Republic of Iran is great. But what I was thinking of is that uh, the madness of the Umayyads, could it be from, have you ever, so is there a history? Think about it. Like we have researched so much, so deeply we are told from all sides. Shia religious scholars are could it be another reason? Or just think about it. I'm not like satan putting satanic, but in the Quran we are told that. Satan even incited putting words, trying to put words, but we failed shaitan, shaitan later on. And establish our word, which is uh, God's word just in this world. So justice will be coming, Imam Mahdi will be coming. But for some time, can you just, you know, do your research like I've heard from Khalib Kamal and Zafar Heretic on their YouTube channels, in their videos, live streams, maybe I saw late. Bani Kureza, part one, part two, part three, like that from Khalib Kamal. Uh, did Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, ever, has the history ever recorded him killing children, underage children, or if they are aged? So maybe that's why. Uh, like there were, no, uh, he was, if there is a history recorded, it is that if they came of age, like they would put down and uh, check them 
check them if the children of Bani Koreza has co have come on of age, then they would kill them. There's a recorded history. I don't know from where, which source, Sunni source, which Sunni source, Ghalib Kamal. I was quite, uh, and I, 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 yeah, it is, I confess I haven't checked, but it must be recorded somewhere that they're coming out with this. They, I am sure for 100% that they're telling the truth. But still, I have to recheck, sorry. So much lies and all this, so much distortion of truth, twisting and turning. So that's why Yazid, could it be? Because who wants to go to hell? People will be scared of the hellfire. But if you were there at Muhammad's time, and if someone can tell us if any history recorded that Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam, killed children, then we can say, at least consider the other side, Umayyad side. You see? Why they would go so insane, wickedly? Because Prophet Muhammad, could Prophet Muhammad have been such a wicked, insane person to be going after their children? That's why. So consider this point. And I hope you would pause for a moment. You're not a serial killer in Pakistan. Pakistani, you know, after children, boys. And this, uh, this religion has given a lot of security, but we haven't seen heaven. I was telling my father, okay, they, uh, the LL Bayt have given us the security for heaven. You do this, 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 and you will go to heaven. But at least show us. Show us. So I wanted to, like, you know, like, I was told that this Wali Allah had gone in the grave, maybe wanting to know what will happen to me after death. At least feel it so we can at least say that in our own experience, yes, I've uh, uh, died. You know, like the American Westerners have this near to death and they see the light. Some have recorded and then we say, don't listen to these stories. These are Westerners and we don't know. Shaitan could be showing them the light after death. Near, you know, like they go and they... Like even Anita Marjani was saying, um, uh, Anita Marjani has, uh, has been telling us about her experience when she like went into the other realm and what was she feeling? Compassion, complete love and compassion. And uh, no punishment, nothing, no horror. Like uh, Prophet Muhammad, when he went for Mehraj, he saw that women who were not covered and who were bad, adultery and adulterous, don't tell me they were prostitutes. Because Surah Noor Ayat just doesn't. Then, you know, they're hanging from their boobs. They're, like, literally, uh, God knows what, what was mentioned in the madlises and where I read, or I was told here, here say by my members, family members, oh, that this, uh, maybe I heard that, you know, Rasulullah went and saw that the women were hung. It, uh, but you see here in Sermon 80, Najul Balagha, Imam Ali does say, I said women are wicked, Imam Ali says that. I correct myself that they lead you to evil, and they, Imam Ali himself has said they have, they are evil. We can say it safely that uh, they lead you to evil, so they are evil. So if any good you see in them, even then don't get attracted or follow them or obey them or listen to them. Because everything is seductive in us. Everything is evil, snaky. We are snakes. That snake that came and told Eve, Hazrat Hawa, forget him. We are the ones. We. Forget that snake. We are the snakes. That's what I would say. After considering all the things, uh, reading points and all, sayings and the Quran ayats, how can expert Quranics and Quran experts fail in seeing this uh, Surah Nur ayat, where these made 
or slave girls or women, girls and women or girls and women. The compulsion verse is a command, but if they desire to remain chaste, that word, chastity, of you will, every time it comes in the Quran, so beautiful, you will hold it, you will embrace it. You say, women of chastity, women remain chaste. Still, you are, you have that quality in you, where you can seduce, you are deficient in faith, but embrace that word. Everyone, Muslims saw that word. Women should not be compelled, forced into prostitution. Surah Nur Ayat 33. Oh, yes. And if they are, then God is all forgiving and merciful. Like how will God distinguish who are the ones who were forced and who were the ones who were? That's why no punishment. Oh, 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 oh. Pay attention, this is very, very serious. Step by step, I'm going here. Sorry, just kidding. Shaitan ko bhagate. Angels are in. Angels are coming here, you know. You know who has come today and whose hand is over my head. Because when Alama Rashid Turabi used to recite, Majlis in Nishtapar, they used to say someone's hand, like this lady's hand, shadow used to be going over his head, moving. Bibi Fatma Tizahra Ayyadar. So, Sarah, Tahir, Tahir, you Larat Rahe. So I said, Nadim Sarver's a song. Sorry, I made a mistake there in my previous video somewhere. Nadim Sarver's Noha. Sina pe hoon, to kya hua, behen me saath, saath hoon. I just got this shock of my life. So when the, when I was saying, Manzar Arata, sorry, there's a, this is, I did not put my volume off. Sorry, this is a message. Oh, I have enough breakdown. I'm go there will be a time for breakdown, but I can't. The women, girls, punishments are on them. Islamic punishments. Can't afford to break down right now. So that's why I came here to talk about the children going to war and if in Islamic history anywhere it is recorded the Umayyads try to get their truth through or falsehood we say the Shias and Sunni uh, in some ways the Sunnis too if it is against uh, Prophet Muhammad and the Sahabas but uh, little less attention is paid on Imam Hassan and his children and Imam Hassan and his children. Why? So you see this also a point to ponder over. And uh, so, huh? so as I was saying in my previous video and then I stopped as no, I was listening, re-listening. Again, listening to my this previous video. Bani Kureza's children. No, don't tell me. Huh? So I have to go through again and see where I have to search. Okay, I'm breaking down. I need a break. 